Yeah, that, that kind of discussion leads me to my second question about whether we feel that the community councils have got proper expert, access to expertise and resources, particularly in the, the planning process. I well remember my own experience in attending my local community council some years ago, and they were basically bombarded with planning papers with little or no assistance to help them get get through it. Has that, so has that changed, or is it pretty much the same as it was then? And is that an area that we could improve on to give them direct access to expertise and resources to, to play a full and proper part in the local planning process? Maybe Dr Escobar again would kick off with that one. Yeah, I'll, I'll kick off. I'm, I'm sure the improvement service might, might have something to add here as well, because um, it's how the, the work they do on, on offering training and so on. Um, the, when we did the research, the community, which was research with community councillors in workshops and survey and all of that, um, they noted a, a wide range of skills that they would appreciate more support uh, developing and, and accessing expertise. Uh, the top thing that they put on the list is, is to develop more expertise on public engagement, on community engagement. Right? So the ability to bring their communities together to then work out plans and priorities and take things forward. Uh, but then help with planning. I mean, uh, community councils are a statutory body in the planning process. Uh, the amount of work that they undertake for their communities it, it often goes unseen and underappreciated. And, um, in some places, they might have uh, ad hoc access to someone in the council who might help, or, but that's not, it's not systematic and it's not across the board. They just need to find their own way through a maze of things that they might have never seen. So again, that's another case of um, where they are not even, uh, I think, enough supported to do the things they are supposed to do. Although I know that they, over the years there have been some training on, on planning, on finance, uh, so there have been some training programs. I'm not saying nothing has happened, but I'm just saying I don't think it's systematic enough. I don't think it's available to everyone. And it's not just about having some training. Ideally, what you want is them to have access to any local institutions, local colleges, for example, uh, any expertise that might be available in local businesses, expertise available in the council. And because they don't have that kind of convening power and that kind of status as a, you know, as, as, as community representatives that are well known and respected and, and all of that because of the position they are in, um, then it's really difficult to mobilize that expertise and that capacity. So it then is left to individual relationships. So if you have a community council that has members who come from uh, you know, professional backgrounds where they might have the networks, then you'll be in a better position. But that's really unfair to mm -hmm. communities where perhaps some of that expertise might not be available. So I think we need to get better um, at being systematic. Uh, but also remembering that it's not just, just about expertise on planning, expertise on, on, on finance. Um, we need to pay attention to the other side of all of this, which is their own expertise in organizing and mobilizing their communities so that then local authorities and the NHS and other bodies that come knocking on the door of community councils can, uh, they, they, they know that community councils are putting in the right place to be a bridge to their communities. And that takes a, a lot of community organizing and community development work. And as I said previously in a session here in this committee, the community learning and development workforce has been diminishing across the country in the last 10 years. So uh, community councils are affected by that as well and they should be supported, not just on those hardcore skills of finance, planning, but also on what sometimes are considered softer skills, but just as important of community engagement, facilitation, mediation skills, community organizing. Uh, and that could make a massive difference. Because if we do that, then all of a sudden, a lot of the policies that we know need to be developed at a very granular level across Scotland, given the very centralized system of governance we have, if all of a sudden we had all that increased capacity so those, through those 1,200 community councils, we'll be reaching far and deep into communities and mobilizing all kinds of capacity and energy to make things happen. Okay, thank you, Dr. Escobar. Uh, Emma, Brian? Um, yeah, that's sort of one of the areas that the Improvement Service try to work on. Limited resources, so what we tend to do is partner with organisations that already have materials that we can repurpose and share with community councils. For example, uh, we work with the Open University, who have created a portal for community councillors which provides free training in things like, in fact, some sort of community engagement skills are in there, but also finance and digital. Uh, we work with the Scottish Tech Army, who have 
created websites for some community councils and also provided some training on um, using devices to take video, that kind of thing. Uh, we created our own social media guide. Um, you know, community engagement, you know, is, is not going to get anywhere without good communication skills. And social media is kind of the format to do that on. But not everybody working with a community council is confident in using social media. We've also run a series of webinars. So we've brought in people like Sustrans um, and other organisations who can provide information and support direct to community councils. So it's about repurposing what's already out there with the limited resources that we have. Um, I guess one of the biggest things that we've managed to do is with a company called Geosphere. Um, again, that, that's through relationships within the improvement service with the Spatial Hub, which provides, which sort of categorises local data. Um, and it's a, a, Jack, you may be familiar with their English version, which is Parish Online, which is a, a mapping software tool. It's called Community Map Scotland. And it basically allows community councils access to this free mapping tool. And they can see their community area and all the data that's relevant to it. Very useful in creating local place plans. But I know that some community councils have already used it to map like a new path network. And they've got free access to that for a year. So again, it's all about kind of developing these relationships with organisations which already provide services to try and see if they can be repurposed for community councils. Because the community councils themselves don't just have limited resources, there's also limited resources when it comes to supporting them. Mm -hmm. Thanks very much for that, Emma.